Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part five of my PHP security tutorial. Today, I thought I'd be kind of interesting to actually show you a real world problem. So, I guess it was about seven, eight months ago, a friend of a friend of a friend contacted me because their website was receiving an immense amount of spam. And they didn't realize it at the time, but there was a lot of underlying problems. I'm going to show you here just how dangerous SQL injection can be. And based off my own personal research, it seems to me that SQL SQL injection seems to be possible on about one in every four websites. Research actually says one in three, but you can see just here how dangerous it is. Well, after I found out they were having problems with spam, that's normally a pretty elementary problem that should be fixed by most programmers. And in the next tutorial, I'll show you exactly what was going on with that. But I decided to poke around in their website. Now, what I did was I cut out just the login part of their website here. And I'm going to show you real quickly a way to see if a website is subjectable to SQL injection. All I'm going to do is type in one character, a quote. That's it, nothing else. Well, whenever I did that on this website and clicked on login, I was provided with pretty much all I would need in regards to hacking this website. I know a lot about the fields and the different column names that are used and a lot about this website in general. And whenever you look at this query right here on screen, you might think it's well protected because it is requiring both an email to be added as well as a password. Well, you're gonna see here real quickly how easy it is to subject this. And also I saw that this person did not suppress errors on their site, so this also points at the fact that this is a pretty elementary programmer that didn't know what they were doing. I'm going to show you how easy it would be, based off of this script right here, to find out all the user information that's currently stored on that database. But another way to prove that SQL injection can actually be used is to type in not one quote, but two quotes. After doing that and clicking login, if the errors go away, I know that this script is easily hackable using SQL injection. And I'm going to show you here just how easy it is to be able to pull out as much information as I want. Now I'm going to type in one quote followed by a space, or and if you saw my other previous tutorials, you know what's going on here. And then what I'm going to do is type in something that is always going to come back as positive. So what I'm going to do, I could actually just type in a one, and that's what I'm going to do. So what I'm doing here, if you look at the code here, what it's going to do is I'm, I want to pull up the user ID, first name, last name, email, user IDs, and passwords. And this also contained all kinds of credit card information on the other script from the user's part of the database. And what I'm doing here is I'm closing off the end with a quote right here. So I'm closing off the end of the email. And then what I'm saying, remember this is a WHERE clause, and entry points for SQL injection are almost always located in the WHERE clause. And the reason is, is this is normally where user inputs start in a query. So knowing that, all I need to do here is put in a clause that's always going to pop back as true. And if I can do that, I'm going to get user IDs, first names, and everything else for every single user in the database. So I'm going to show you how I did that. So I type in a single quote, which will close off that email part. And then what I'm going to do is put in an or, and then I'm going to put in something that's always going to be true. Well, the problem is, is it's going to then ask for the password. Well, it's real easy to get rid of that. In all of the major databases out there, you could comment a line out by just putting two dashes in. And by the way, don't do this in real life. This is purely for security practices. You get in a lot of trouble if you do this on other people's websites. So on Microsoft SQL and Oracle and so forth, what these two dashes mean is you want to comment out everything that precedes it. Well, with MySQL, you have to also put in a space. And if I do that and click login, you can see that it popped up all the information on every single user that is currently stored in the database. Quite dangerous. Well, let's look at this script and exactly how it works. Okay, so we're going through, this is the actual code. I'll enlarge it here. And you can see here it has this setups. If you saw the previous tutorials, this is checking to see if information is submitted. And then as I look here, I see that they did absolutely nothing in regards to trying to keep people from putting malicious information. That's what's going here. They're accepting the information entered in at the email and the password area and not scrubbing it at all. Now we could easily solve this problem just by using my escape data. And this is not all I'm going to do, by the way, to get rid of these problems. So we just put in escape data and I run it through the function that I showed you previously and boom, that's all I did right there. Now if I save that and open this guy up and try to do the same thing again, you're going to see that it automatically, all I needed to do was put this little tiny bit of information in here. 
and it solved the ability for the person to come in there and mess around in the database. But we're not done. So we're going through here. And also, if you've seen other tutorials, you know that I do not like it whenever the user ID is an email. So we're going to change that. But let's go through here. Another thing I don't like about this is you never want to put any SQL errors out to your screen. So I got to ditch that. I have no idea why they're using MySQL number of rows here because it would be much better to use MySQL affected rows and then have this be equal to one, meaning that one result. If you only expect one result to come back, then you should protect yourself from getting an unlimited number of results. So you, they could have changed this right here and that would have solved the problem also. I don't know what's going on with this code right here. I left it as it is just because this is the way that they were using this information to fetch. Again, this is kind of a sign of a programmer that doesn't know what they're doing. Then they close the database. Then whenever you also see a bunch of comments in code, this is a sure sign the person doesn't know what they're doing again. And then if we come down here to the email address where it's taking the information, you can see that there's no maximum length to find. So we want to come in here and fix all this code up and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it step by step by step. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is just get rid of this all together. So that's gone. And now what I'm going to do is come in and run a regular expression on this information. So Craig underscore match right like this. And then I'm going to say, all right, well, I'm going to check for a user ID this time instead of a email so I can be a lot more restrictive. I'm only going to allow the person to enter letters and numbers makes it almost impossible for them to be able to do anything. And I'm gonna say that's gonna be eight to 20 characters in length, right like that. So now I'm restricting pretty dramatically what they are able to even enter in here. Use the old strip slashes again. And I'm also gonna trim off any white space. And like I said before, we're gonna use user IDs here instead of email addresses. So there's a regular expression. Now if it passes that regular expression, am I done? No. I'm also going to run it through my escape data function. And all this code's on the website, newthinktank.com, if you want it. It's all free. Else, if it didn't pass, I'm going to mark user ID as false. And then I'm going to echo to screen. Make sure you get your quotes right. Okay. So there's your warning message. And then if I want to perform pretty much the same thing on the password, I'm just going to copy and paste this out of here, except I'm going to type pass in here instead and pass instead here. Please enter a valid password. And technically I shouldn't even tell them that this information is wrong. So I'm going to say or password, jump in here like this. Boom. So now they're not going to know which bit of information they entered in correctly if they're just hacking away at this guy. Okay. And now, and am I done? No. I'm actually going to put in some CAPTCHA code to make it even harder to log into this. I'm going to pull that from what I did in the previous tutorial. And you can see here, I assigned this variable to the value of one, which is equal to true. And then I'm going to be pulling in all this, this code right here. This is where you insert your private key, as I showed you before. And here's an error message. And here I set the CAPTCHA security variable to zero, which is going to be equal to false. Okay, so that's all that's going on there. I just copied and pasted that from the last tutorial. And then now, before I actually query the database, I'm going to check that all that information was entered in correctly. So you and password and copy that right there boink all right now i'm also going to have to come in here and change this to user id and this to you and everything else can stay the same that's for the query itself and then here i'm going to get rid of the capability for them to put an error on the screen so that's a big no-no just like that i'm going to get rid of this mess right here and instead for affected rows from the last query. Now, if we're expecting that there's only going to be one row of information sent back to us, well, we'd actually want to block if more than one was sent. So we're going to put in one right there, saying we're only going to accept it if one row of information was sent back to us. And then I'm just going to leave this mess right here the way that it was. Again, I'm trying to secure this, not do anything else. And this has no purpose in being here, so that's going to get deleted as well. Also, another thing that's not done here, is I want to close this script after I close the database because I don't want it to run any longer. There's no point. So I'm going to exit both of those out. And then I'm actually going to copy and paste this right here because I put in another if conditional. So we're going to be able to close that out, make sure that is correct. And also I should put in here either the user ID or password are wrong, but I'm going to leave that the same as for now because it's not technically that important. This wasn't originally called bad login, by the way. I'm going to call this good login. And then I'm going to come down here and while this doesn't really provide that much protection because you can subvert this information, I'm still going to put in a max length bit of code just to mess with them a bit. I have no idea why they put 25 and let's put 20 in here. 
And then don't forget to put the CAPTCHA system in here inside of the form area. And again, you'd put your public key right here. And then just that quickly, I turned a really volatile mess of a login script into a very secure login script. And let's see exactly what it looks like. If we type in good login, and you can see here, now, if I type in a quote, even if I fill in the CAPTCHA area, see, please enter a valid user ID, please enter a valid password, da 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 So it blocks out SQL injection altogether. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Up next, I'm going to show you how a lot of spam gets injected into people's websites without them knowing, and I'm going to proceed into directory traversal and how to protect from that. Till next time.